Hey everybody, it's November 15th on Wednesday. You're here at the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Working Group for Chaos. I'm Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager. And just a quick reminder, as all chaos meetings, this is under our chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind. Um, and again, you're, as we always say, you're welcome to interact the way that is most comfortable for you. So if you would like to keep your cameras off and just chat in the chat, that's totally fine. Mics on off, cameras on off. We don't, we don't care. It's all good. We take any kind of interaction, whatever makes you happy. So let me share my screen. Yes, there it is. All right. Let me know if you can't see that, but you should be able to see it. Uh, let me uh, actually, let me open this chat so we don't miss anything too. There we go. And if um, folks can just keep an eye out for newcomers to the meeting um, that late, that join late and drop the meeting minutes in there for them, that would be amazing. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, okay, so the first thing on our agenda, oh, here's the, oh, let me go, a few more lines, there we go. Um, if you want to add your name and tell us how you're feeling today, um, that'd be great, but you don't have to. Again, it's all up to you. Just a quick reminder, we do have um, kind of a weird schedule at the end of the year for chaos meetings. We usually take the week of Thanksgiving off. Um, so there will be no meeting for this meeting next week. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to chaos meetings, but this meeting in particular is canceled next week. Um, and then we um, always do this. We, we hold fast to this because we really like to not burn out our community. <laughs> so we do usually cut off meetings from December 11th to January 8th or around those those dates. Um, that's what it is this year. Uh, just to give our all of us a break, you can still keep working. And there are some folks I know that are going to just keep working on things that they're already working on, which is totally fine. Um, but just know that if you are working on something, um, there there will be no meetings officially from Chaos, and also there might be a delayed reaction in Slack, um, so or delayed responses in Slack. So just wanted to throw that out there. You, again, you're welcome to keep working on things, um, but yeah, because like we have Chaos Con coming up in February, and so you know we'll continue to kind of plug away at that but officially no meetings january or december 11th january any questions on any of this or comments anything it's not clear okay seems pretty clear but you never know um um i had a question about this uh i think is not on here okay so um we're in the process of updating this event badging website and i know there some content somewhere. I was wondering if anybody on this call had contributed to that as I try to track this down. Can I, you provide like more detail? So is it about the development of the new site? Yes. Or is it, okay. yes the new DEI event badging. I was just pinged this morning. Um, folks are looking for that and I wasn't sure where it lived. And okay. I may have worked on this. <laughs> I don't even remember. It's been a while. So I was just wondering if anybody else on the call could remember where that was. So I just put it. Is this the link you're talking about that I just put in the chat? That is the link. Um, there was some. So they were asking about like the testimonials and I told them just to leave that off for now because we don't have this right okay. now. So I told them I would work on that after the first of the year. I'd contact some of our event organizers and see if I could get some testimonials okay. after the first of the year. Um, I think like some of this, it's the FAQs. And I thought that this was written somewhere. I didn't know where it was. If if we can't find it, um, we'll we'll just make it up. I'll just I'll just make something up because um, we we've basically written this stuff in a variety of places. It would just be pulling it from somewhere old. Okay. Let me see. I'll take a look. Not like I couldn't remember if you worked on this, Matt, or if Ruth worked on this, or if I worked. Like I didn't remember, so I was yeah. said, I told them I would just bring it up in this meeting, and maybe somebody would remember. Or I'm not seeing anything like immediately in my docs. Okay. Um, I'll look after this. Um, well, when I get a break in the meetings, I'll look. Have you talked to Ruth? Does she? Mm -mm. Nope, I haven't yet. I didn't know if she would be here. Um, okay. I was hoping she would be, but it's okay. No, no worries at all. I'm gonna take a guess that she has this stuff. That's that's kind of what I thought too. But then I thought, well, maybe I was supposed to write that. 
this. I don't remember. So if I'm supposed to write it, I will get it written. Um, okay. So could you describe again what needs to be written here? I have a few questions on event badging too. Uh, it's just, from what I understand, it's this part, this FAQ, because it's all lorem ipsum. Okay. Um, and the testimonials, again, I told them to just leave this part out because we don't okay. have that yet. So really that's it? I, I think so. I think so. Um, I think everything else was kind of coming into place. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, but so I'll then, double check. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I can, that's not that. That doesn't seem like that much content to write. Right, it didn't, yeah. But I will verify um, with with that team, with Eddie okay. and Gus and her team. Um, okay. Okay, so then can you pull that site back up again? Sure. So right now, I know this site is not live. Yeah. But. Well. Sorry. <laughs> so if you click on apply for a badge. It goes here. Okay. Okay. So it does go there. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's actually what we want. Yeah. At this point. I think okay. so. Yeah. Especially if the only thing that's missing is the FAQs, like that's everything else. Like then that's kind of done. And then, and okay. the, as you mentioned, this is still a little, um, isn't it still like a little clunky in terms of how people do actually apply? Yeah, the process really is pretty clunky for them. Okay. So what happens is they fill this out, they put in all their information, and when it's done, you have to do it manually. So you copy and paste, and then you open an issue and you paste it in. So like, can you, can you, okay. you as the event organizer, I mean. So what's the advantage of filling this out? Uh, it gives you the template already, and so um, and there's like a button that just says "click to copy." So it will put it all in Markdown for you. I see. So you don't have to like ready. retype it. Right. You just okay. click the button, go over to GitHub, open an issue, and paste it. Okay, so it's not horrible. We just like to we do like to get rid of that copy paste step. Yep. 100%. Okay. Okay, and because then, at the time, if they if they decide to change like the title of the issue or any of the things inside of it in the yeah. process, it screws up the badging bot. So so we need everything to be how it is. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That so sense. that's that's why we're doing the copy and paste just to really ensure. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't sound horrible to be honest with you. So. It's not, and it, and this is what we've been using for the past however many years. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not awful. And it hasn't prevented a lot of submissions. Mm -mm. Okay. I don't think it has. Mm. Okay. Um, and then. Sorry, I one more quick thing on this. Um, oh, we yeah. have three more metrics that we have been trying to get into this, but it was kind of like in between stages. Like, do we do it on the new system? Do we do it on the old system? So I think we should just add them to the old system. Mm -hmm. this system right here and then when it's when we go to new processes then it will just go along with the rest of them is that yep. a cool yeah i agree with that and what are the new metrics it's event accessibility public health and safety and event inclusion uh, event location inclusivity okay. those are three that have been hanging out for months because we weren't okay. sure where, it, <laughs> where to put them where it was going so maybe that's something we can kind of do like with... before well i was thinking maybe we could get it done I don't know what goes into that, but maybe get it done before FOSDEM. Yes. Which I would agree. be February 1st, because then we can talk about it at FOSDEM. I think that's doable. I think okay. um, a lot of it, well, I can do half of it. Enoch needs okay. to implement it. So, and I know he's super swamped right now. So, yeah, with project badging. Right. So, but before okay. FOSDEM seems like a doable thing to me. Okay. As I speak on behalf of Enoch, who is who's not here. Yeah, Enoch will get it done. Perfect. Thanks, Enoch. <laughs> He's got nothing else. He's fine. All right. Uh, cool. yeah. Okay. That okay. And I, I can help here too, particularly if it's like after the first of the year. Okay. You know, or spots in between, but okay. Um, and then I did see the badging bot was down right now. Is that it's because they're switching all the servers around. Enoch pinged me this morning and said that they are still reconfiguring some things and it'll be down for a little bit. 
Okay. So I said, okay, that's all right. I don't think anything that's waiting is super urgent. Okay. Um, I think it's, I think it will just be a matter of days. If How many you know, applications do we have right now? Three. There's three. Three. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are any of them, I think maybe one I saw had ended the process. Yeah. Like, one is ready for the badge. Uh, one is ready, needs the checklists and one, actually two need the badge and okay. one needs the checklists. Okay. So, okay. But I cool. let them know that that's what's going on. So all the event organizers kind of know that we're just. Okay. Is it, is it LF event organizers? Um, one is, one is state of open. Okay. Um, actually, two are yeah, two are LF people, and one is the state of Open Con, which I okay. uh, he said no big deal because I responded okay. yesterday and was like, hey, this is just so okay. you know what's going on. He said no big deal. So okay, right on. Okay. Um, I think that's it that I had for event batching. Okay, that sounds good. Anybody have questions on any of this stuff? Happy to explain that a little more if people don't really know what's going on with this. Or if you have questions like after this meeting, if you're like, hey, Elizabeth, I don't know what this is. I would like to know more. Just ping me on Slack and I will be happy to tell you all the things about it. Uh, let's go on to, well, do we want to stay with badging since we're on badging? Yeah, let's just stay there. Okay. Oops. Well, geez. How do you how do you do stuff? I don't know. Here. What did you just do? <laughs> I, I'm just oh, I... quick and I messed it all up. <laughs> um, okay, so this is actually project badging updates. And we gave this in our community meeting yesterday. Um, but we did just want to let people know that we are kind of consolidating some things and um, the GitLab folks, Marco is on the call right now, have been amazing in helping us expand the functionality of project badging to also include some GitLab uh, work so that, because right now folks can only use GitHub. And so um, with some PRs that Marco has submitted, um, we're going to be helping folks on GitLab also go through the process. So thank you, Marco. Hooray. You're awesome. Um, what else? I think that was... Well, I mentioned at the beginning, so Marco has a couple pull requests in on badging on okay. GitHub slash badging, and I think Sean has taken a look at them, but he wanted Enoch to take a look at them as well, okay. just for coverage. And I think Enoch just responded to Marco this morning saying it's on it's it's on the it's on the near term. Um, and so if you go back to the Click that other tab you have open right now, Elizabeth. Yeah. Whoops. Wait a minute. Whoa, hold on. What happened? There we go. If you go back, back, go to like um, home, maybe. I think it's just, oh, well, maybe. This yeah. Is okay. So this is, <laughs> nope. Okay. Just, okay. So just to keep people posted, okay. I know this is. <laughs> This is just to kind of give people an idea of the process that we're going to be doing. So we have badging.chaos.community. And Margo, this is like where some of the design work is coming in and needs to just be finished. So this will be the main page just for badging. And it'll basically just say, welcome to Chaos Badging. You know, we really appreciate you being here. And just kind of a, it, honestly, the page probably won't scroll at all. You know what I mean? It'll just be a very short Kind of landing page for people and then event badging you know apply for an event badge you would click that and then subsequently learn about event badging and you could apply for a badge and so that's in place and then project badging um this will kind of the, you know the the pr that basically you have that adds so this will then start pointing to that and we just don't have that connected yet so when you click on project badging if that sort of makes sense it'll take us to the flow that people can then log in and submit their repositories as to where they have their dei.md file, which is, I think, the process that you're very familiar with. So that, that exists. The reason you don't see it is, to Elizabeth's point, we're just kind of doing some server movement right now. And <laughs> you know how this goes. It's just kind of picking. I think I was surprised how hard it is to move things sometimes, <laughs> just picking something up. I, I don't know, a Control-C, Control-V, didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> Never. 
like <laughs> so, IP addresses and all kinds of stuff. Oh, that goodness gracious. So, um, but um, I just have to say that, you know, Kingsley and Enoch and Ruth, I don't know if any are on the call, have all just been amazing at this entire process. Um, so thanks to everybody. And this is moving forward, just sometimes what you see is a black screen. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just don't see much sometimes, but there are things moving in the in the background. So Marco, did you have did you have any questions about that or like concerns or anything? Uh not really, because my PRs are basically ready to get reviewed, but okay. yeah, it makes sense to well, they can get reviewed and then when the new graphics and stuff is ready, we can merge it all together. Yep. So yeah, okay. that's totally fine to me. Okay. Sounds good. Um, great. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, I think everything looks pretty good. And then I did see, um, Oh, I think is on the call. Yeah. I think a quick question for you. We went, we were asked, talking about this website content for event badging. Is it just the FAQs? Is that like on, uh, um, down here? Is this all that's, that we need? Is that all we're missing? We can't hear you if you're talking because you're muted. Or maybe you're chatting in the chat. I don't know. Okay, well, that's okay. Maybe you walked away for a minute. That's totally fine. Okay, well, let's go on. Um, I wanted to bring this up here. Anita is on the call. So, Anita, I'm going to give you a chance to talk about this. Uh, if you have not read this blog post, uh, it's amazing. It is, yes, absolutely fantastic. This uh, is the result of so much work by Anita, um, just a, a ridiculous amount of work, and it's a fascinating article. She's done a lot of research, a lot of um, interviews with people, um, really talking about the DEI metrics and just kind of how people are feeling um, and the impact. So. I just wanted to like bring this up and surface this a little more. We posted it to our blog yesterday. Um, Anita, did you want to talk about this at all? Anything you want to add about your experience making this, um, doing this research? Um, okay. Well, so um, for more context, this was like a project that came up from one of our discussions in the meeting here, where we try to understand how, um, our DI metrics actually people um, react to these metrics in real time whether they're benefiting from it and if they are how did it actually impact their participation in open source as a whole and um, so we just reached out to a couple of under um, persons that identified as um, belonging to a particular underrepresented group or the other just to get their perspective on how they see and perceive the chaos DEI metrics. And um, so this was the outcome of it. A lot of persons put in inputs um, towards getting some of this um, data out there. And so we decided to share it with the community as well, telling what we got at the end of that long um, interview campaign. I have two comments. So, uh, absolutely amazing work, Anita. So you're, I mean, crafting the interview protocol and reaching out to folks and doing the interviews, um, transcribing the interviews, identifying themes, like absolutely amazing. So, uh, great job. Did you, Anita, did you see the, in the message I sent you in Slack yesterday? just about possibly breaking this up into two blog posts for opensource.net. Oh, so yes. Um, so apparently they got back to me oh, and okay. someone on the team said they were going to um, format it to their um, to meet their standards and they publish it. Oh, 
okay, well, <laughs> never mind about breaking it up into two, <laughs> even better. <laughs> yeah, so I think what I think is they might take out bits and pieces. I don't know how it's going to be, but okay. yeah. Okay, well, that's that's great news. Okay. I just that's wanted to bring attention to this right here. Uh, 101 interviews with 19 participants. That's a lot of people. If you've never done interviews for folks, like that's a lot of people, considering each one of these is probably like an hour long. So, yeah. yeah I have to say this is, that's more than master's students do often for a master's thesis and somewhere getting into the world of what a PhD student would do for a PhD thesis for dissertation. So just, <laughs> that's no small task. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of a lot of qualitative data to go yeah. through. So yeah. Um, so just, again, congratulations, Anita. Just really, really well done. So proud to have this on our site. Like gets me a little, a little choked up. Like it's just a lot of, of good work. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I really appreciate the support I got um, during the time of um, all this. Really appreciate that. Um, another question for you, Anita, based on your research, are there actions that we should take in this working group in particular, based on kind of what your conclusions were? Like, what do, you, do we need to do something different? Do we need to take some action in some way? Yeah, um, well, there were also feedbacks that pointed to areas that um, we could do better in terms of letting people get to know and understand these metrics and also like adopt them and also other ways other ways or formats which we could look in terms of creating metrics um i think perhaps i could share that when i take a little time to go over them and create i'll share with Matt. Yeah, that would be awesome. I think this group would really love to just have even just like one or two like higher priority recommendations from you of what things yeah. we should address quicker than um, later, sooner than later. Um, that would be yeah. really helpful. But yeah, no rush, obviously. Um, this is the end of the year anyway. Things kind of slow down. So maybe for 2024, it's something that we look at. Sure. Uh, I'm just going to put that in here, not to, you know, give you more work to do on this, but, but I would really be interested in your insight and your recommendations on, on what you think the most important things are that this group should tackle in 2024. Oh, I don't mind at all. Oops, 2024, there we go. Um, okay, any questions or um, comments, other, anything else for Anita before we move on? Okay, there were some nice comments in the chat. A lot of, a lot of kudos to you, Anita. Um, Thanks, Anita, everyone. Anita, again. <laughs> <laughs> right into you again. Do you want to talk about the sustained DEI working group? Um, yes, sure. So, um, I... I don't know why I haven't shared that here, but we I decided to take on the effort to reboot the DEI working group in sustained open source community. And um, the goal was generally to have a place um, considering that sustain often tackles a lot of issues around open source sustainability and um, moving effort towards that. I thought having like um, a working group around diversity equity and inclusion where we can also discuss in a more you know global perspective not um, tackling it from my community's view or another community's view um, would be a good way to hear more people's um, points in terms of dei and so yes we have started this had a second meeting last friday and um, so far so good it's been great and so if you are interested in talking or getting to know more about um, DEI efforts going on in open source and also other ways that we could um, work towards improving diversity, equity and inclusion, 
in open source, I think you should also jump in. Sorry, this is uh, when the meetings happen. Do we know where? Where? Like, is there a Zoom link or is that on here? Yes. Somewhere? So um, about that, um, Sustain uses Big Blue Button. Okay. Uh, so um, if you check through the meeting minutes, you would actually find the. That's right. I think it's at the top. I'm just. You'd find that. the link to the meeting. Okay. Okay, somewhere in here. Okay. So, Anita, are there uh, like things that the community or this working group is looking to produce? You know, like in in the chaos DEI working group. Of course, we're like producing metrics or the badging programs. Are there things that that this working group is working on as well? Yeah, so um, currently we decided to um, put together a landscape of um, DEI resources for reference to open source community uh, communities and leaders. That's like the first effort to decide to um, resume with. And um, subsequently, uh, one of our goals is also to have um, you know, a platform where anyone who wishes to, you know, consider diversity, equity, and inclusion within their communities can jump in and learn from other experts, as well as identify resources that best suit their communities and all of that. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Awesome. Any other questions for Anita on this working group? Cool, okay. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, looks like we have one more thing on our agenda. And I'm guessing Matt put this It's probably on. just an announcement. So if you're in uh, our, if you're in the chaos Slack, um, Sela Yang just posted, uh, she's going to be leading the Latin America chapter for chaos and building out kind of open source efforts in, in Latin America. So we've been working with Sela for uh, two years now. Uh, she's been really helpful in terms of helping us best center DEI within our own project. So that's uh, been work that Sela has been helping us with. And so um, similar to what um, Ruth Ikea has been doing with Chaos Africa, Sela is going to be doing in Latin America. Already the conversations have been so unique, just how um, geography, geography plays such an important role and politics plays such an important role. Uh, and so Sela has really, you know, kind of brought that forward um, and is, she's in Costa Rica. And so I recommend that if you are on Slack, just say hi to her, uh, to her post. It's really great to have Sela here. And also what's interesting about this um, part of the world as well, kind of similar to Chaos Africa, is that there's a lot of folks who are new to open source. So that is another reason why we kind of want to uh build out some of these resources for folks who are brand new to open source just to kind of help them along and and as we've said before um if they end up staying with chaos awesome if they go on to another open source community equally as awesome like we just um want to reach out to these folks and invite them to the table you know that there's a lot of opportunities in open source that they're not um they don't have access to so yeah that's hopefully what we can accomplish there with Sela. I guess maybe I'll also just say, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's watching, but it'll be to the folks on the call here, but you know, thanks to the Sloan Foundation and the Ford Foundation who have provided support um, in for the CAS Africa chapter, as well as the CAS Latin America chapter, and then work that we're gonna be doing in the Balkans as well. So thanks, Michael and Josh. Oops, heart, heart to them. Well, yeah, we love them. They're amazing. We really couldn't do a lot 
without their support. So they are amazing. All right, we got 15 minutes left. Look at us. We've made it all the way through our whole agenda. All right, with 15 minutes, I'll take it. <laughs> right, especially since there's another chaos meeting at the top of the hour. I know. I a bigger break, so. Um, yeah, if nobody has anything else, we can go ahead and end the meeting. I want to make sure people have an opportunity to talk, but yeah, don't want to drag it out. So. I've been staring at the pink flamingos behind Allison for <laughs> about 30 minutes now. So. <laughs> I used to do that here too, to like, like the seniors would do that at, on high schools, like just put a ton of yeah. pink flamingos in the, the school. Yeah, the the UW-Madison tradition ever since the prank happened it's been going on every year where they just put a bunch of lawn flamingos on bascom hill which is like the main hill on campus and so hey this background spoke to me it was like already <laughs> put into my zoom when i signed in with my university sso i was like all right they're telling you're me like this. done so i'm going to use it yeah <laughs> why wouldn't i <laughs> perfect it's a conspiracy from big flamingo i think <laughs> really pushing that tradition but that's all right it's worth it it's worthwhile <laughs> all right everybody thank you for coming and we will see you not next week the week after that so yep. thanks everybody bye everybody bye